Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about power shifting, shifting without lifting, why it's not that great for your transmission to do it, and also why it's not even actually that useful to do in the first place. Now before we get started I want to give a big thank you to LastPass for sponsoring this video and for supporting this channel. So LastPass is a helpful tool for remembering passwords. So I started looking at my own accounts. I've got 125 or so random accounts floating around out there with different passwords. Obviously that's a very challenging number of passwords to remember. So the idea with LastPass is that you create one very long, very difficult password that allows you to log into your LastPass account and then you have access to all of your other accounts and it will auto fill in that information so you don't have to remember hundreds of passwords. It makes it very easy. And LastPass doesn't have access to these passwords. Everything is 256-bit encrypted, which I didn't know what that meant at first so I went down a long rabbit hole and started learning about how encryption works, which is actually pretty cool, but regardless, 256 bit simply means that there's a 256 digit key which you need in order to figure out what that password is which is very difficult to break it's the same level of security used by the US government for top secret material so a very challenging thing to hack uh, essentially is what a 256 bit encrypted thing is but we are not here to learn about encryption instead we are going to be learning about power shifting so what is power shifting well power shifting is simply shifting without lifting your foot off the accelerator pedal so your foot's to the floor your flat out you're accelerating as fast as you can and then you go to shift the next gear and instead of lifting your foot before pressing the clutch in you leave it down and you shift a gear as you would normally after that so you press in the clutch put it in the next gear let out but that whole time your foot is left on the floor now why would you want to do this and really honestly there's not that many good reasons for it so if you do have a turbocharged car it kind of makes sense because it's going to help allow that turbo to remain spooled up by leaving your foot on the accelerator pedal you're going to have that engine running you're going to be creating exhaust and making sure that that turbo spools up you maintain torque so that when you get into the next gear you have that torque available but for naturally aspirated engines really it's not that beneficial all it's doing is it's giving you a little bit of a clutch kick a little bit of an extra bump in acceleration purely because your engine is spinning faster than your transmission and your clutch and so you clamp down on this faster moving engine and it gives you a little bit of you know a forward lurch uh, and so it's not a major benefit yet Yes, you're keeping the engine RPM up into a higher region and within the power band, but really it needs to drop down for that next gear anyways. So you're really just getting this really small bump in acceleration by doing that power shift by leaving your foot down as you're accelerating, as you're shifting gears. And so there are good reasons why you do not want to do this, however. And so we're going to head back to my whiteboard so I can explain this more thoroughly. All right, so in order to understand why power shifting is bad for your vehicle, I've drawn what's going on inside of your car we're going to walk through the process so that we can better understand it. And so here we have our engine, here we have the flywheel, the clutch there in blue, the pressure plate around it. Here you have your transmission, so we're just showing gears one and gears two. Uh, so we've got our lay shaft here and then our gears here for selecting. You've got your shift color right there in this reddish color with the green selector fork, so we're moving that forward backward to put it in first and second. And that takes this collar and puts it either in second gear or in first gear. That's our output shaft going to the rear differential and then to the driven wheels. And so we're gonna walk through the process and talk about you know, why this is a bad thing to do for your transmission uh, and specifically you know, the clutch and possibly the synchronizers. And so starting with you know, the breakdown, here we have our accelerator pedal, the brake, the clutch. Uh, the very first thing you're going to do obviously is just press and hold the accelerator pedal. So you're in first gear, you're driving along, you're flooring it. And when you're in first gear and you're flooring it, everything here is synchronized. Everything is rotating together because everything's fully connected. Your clutch is fully engaged, your selector fork, you've got it in first gear. So your wheel speed matches your transmission speed, matches your engine speed. Now the second thing we do is we press in the clutch. So you're leaving your foot down on the accelerator pedal, you press in the clutch, and so what happens now? Well, because you've now disconnected the wheels and the transmission from the engine, and you're still flooring it, this engine speed goes up. So now your engine speed does not match your transmission speed and your wheel speed. Next, we shift gears. So now that we've pressed in the clutch, we start to move it from gear one to gear two. So right now, once we're in first gear, the second gear's actual rotational speed is going to be higher than first gear's rotational speed. How do we know this? Well, if the engine is spinning at, let's say, 6,000 RPM and we're in first gear, then we have a 3 to 1 gear ratio 
for first gear. That's our example gear ratio, three to one, an aggressive gear ratio. You, so you take 6,000, you divide that by three, that gives you 2,000 RPM. That's the speed of this first gear right here. If you were in second gear, then you have a two to one gear ratio, a lower gear ratio uh, than the first gear, of course. So it gets, it de decreases as you get into the higher gears. So you take 6,000 RPM from the engine, you divide that by two to one, that's the gear ratio, and you're at 3,000. So this is spinning at 2,000, this is spinning at 3,000. And your synchronizer's job as you move this color from first to second is to match that speed. So it's going to take the speed that this is rotating at, which is different from this, and match them together. Now, some people will say that power shifting is bad for your synchronizers, and really it's no worse uh, than you know shifting quickly in any other scenario. And reason being is because your engine isn't connected here. So what your engine is doing, leaving your foot floored, the transmission doesn't care because it's disconnected from it. Your clutch is pressed in, so at this point, the synchronizer doesn't care about what the engine is doing. So saying that power shifting specifically is bad for your synchronizers, not exactly true. Uh, what is true is shifting very quickly and just ramming it in very quickly. That's gonna be harder on your synchronizers than doing it in a slower, smoother motion. Uh, that said, that's what synchronizers are there for. They're there to match that speed. So, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world to shift quickly. Uh, the synchronizers are designed to do that. That's what they're there for. So we've moved it from this first gear position using our selector fork. We pull that back. That causes this to rotate, forcing this forward. We're now in the neutral position. So once this gear selector collar is in the neutral position, now everything is rotating at different speeds. So our wheel speed does not influence the transmission and our engine speed does not influence the transmission. So the gear speeds are actually gonna to start to drop while it's in neutral. They've just got that oil that they're sitting in uh, and those speeds are gonna to start to slow down. Then we start to match that speed as you continue to, you know, move that gear selector from first to second. So now you've engaged second gear and you have matched your wheel speed to your transmission speed once again. Then the final move, uh, the fourth thing we do is we just let out our clutch pedal. And so by releasing our clutch pedal, we're re-engaging the engine to the transmission. So here's where we start to run into trouble because what we're doing is we're taking an engine that's at a very high speed and trying to match it with a transmission which is at a lower speed. And so here, of course, we have that conflict. So the engine and the clutch come together and so you basically are doing one of two things. Either that clutch slips so you have additional wear, or let's say it engages very quickly, then you're simply sending that shock load through your entire transmission and out to the driven wheels. Uh, but pretty much like best case here, what you're doing by power shifting is forcing that clutch to slip a little bit before it can finally engage. So you're gonna have additional clutch wear uh, for very little benefit. Now, some people will say that true power shifting is shifting, leaving your foot down and not using the clutch at all. And in this case, yes, this is terrible for your synchronizers uh, because what you're doing is you're eliminating the clutch's job and you're giving that job to the synchronizer. And so the only thing that's matching the wheel speed to the engine speed is your synchronizer. And so you, as you shift over, that synchronizer is forced to match the wheel speed to the engine speed. And that's not its job. That's the clutch's job in order to make sure that that's a smooth transaction. And otherwise, you're telling the synchronizer to do something that it wasn't designed for. So you're ramming it into that next gear. If it even does go in, it's not going to be happy about it. Uh, it's going to be, you know, a, a lot of wear is going to occur in forcing that to happen. It's not designed for that kind of load or that kind of impact. Uh, so not a good idea to do this clutchless and doing it uh, simply by pressing in the clutch and holding the accelerator pedal simply results in more clutch wear with very little benefit. Now there are some aftermarket solutions that allow you to do this. You can have engine tuning, uh, remapping your engine where you can actually have no lift shifting, leave your foot down. Uh, there are even some factory cars, you know, come production ready uh, with no lift shifting as a feature that you can enable on them. But the difference is with these vehicles, they have electronic throttle bodies. And with these electronic throttle bodies, they're actually changing how open that throttle is even though your foot is flat on the floor. So you're asking for full throttle but the engine mapping will actually change that and it will change how wide open that throttle really is 
in order for your engine to be at the right speed for that shift to execute. So in that case, it's really not that damaging to your engine. You're just simply keeping that engine RPM up where it needs to be for that next shift to occur. You know, it's not going to drop all the way down below where that shift point is. Instead, the engine will hold it there by using the electronic throttle and saying, okay, the next shift needs to be at 4,000 RPM. It holds it there and then you shift it right in. It's going to be smooth. So thank you all so much for watching and thank you to LastPass for partnering on the video. If you guys have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.